Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris and I'm a galactic astrology soul reader and Reiki master teacher. In today's video, we will be exploring the Pisces lunar eclipse on September 17th, September 18th, depending on where you are in the world, where you're tuning in from, as well as the Libra solar eclipse coming up October 2nd. We will look at the galactic astrology of both eclipses and also do all 12 signs, mini readings for where, what life areas will be most impacted by the eclipses, where the changes are taking place, where are the new beginnings and the completions taking place. And at the end, we will also look at an oracle card for the highest guidance for this eclipse portal. My intention with this video is to be as accurate as possible, to be as helpful as possible for the correct information for all who listen to channel through and flow through me. And I am so grateful for your presence and choosing to be with me on this video adventure together. Eclipses in general mark, they are demarcations of big endings, like with this lunar eclipse, which is a large full moon, a very powerful full moon. And with the new moon energy of the solar eclipses, big new beginnings. And very often there is a sense of transformation of anything is possible and that change is here. So knowing that we have just about every six months a series of eclipses, either two or three eclipses that invite us into growth into awakening, mixing things up, getting more clear on our life purpose, our soul intentions, and powerfully propelling us forward for the next six months. So the first eclipse in this series is the Pisces lunar eclipse, and it occurs on September 17th at 4.45 p.m. So like I said, this is a big full moon. If the eclipse is occurring at night in your location, then you may wish to take a look and watch it occur. You also might not, and that's okay. That is up to you. Follow your guidance. The zodiac sign of Pisces is ruled by the planet Neptune. Neptune is the modern ruler of Pisces, and Jupiter is the ancient ruler of Pisces. So Pisces zodiac sign in medical astrology rules the lymphatic system with cancer. So that's the lymph fluid in the body, the lymphatic system, all of our nodes, our lymph nodes in particular locations, helping us to detoxify our bodies and remove toxins and waste and have a nice, fluid, healthy system. So very important system. Pisces also rules the feet. So our connection to the earth and the sensory information that we transmit and receive with the earth, staying grounded, staying rooted, and even thinking about how in reflexology on the feet, our feet are connected to all the different parts of our body. And with a good reflexology session, we can really do a lot of good for our lymphatic system and reducing stress and inflammation in our entire body. So this would be a great time to get a reflexology session or a foot massage or even massage your own feet. Pisces also rules the immune system 
with Virgo zodiac sign. So thinking about what measures, what habits you can take to really support not just short-term, acute, temporary immune health with maybe something more aggressive, but what is going to really support your immune system long-term, thinking about that. And with Saturn in the zodiac sign of Pisces, that really is a wonderful thing to be thinking about, to be considering what supports your detoxification system long-term, what supports your immune system long-term, help helping you to be really healthy and vital as Virgo and Pisces zodiac signs, which are both implicated in this Pisces lunar eclipse as the moon is in Pisces opposite the sun in Virgo. Both of these signs are about our health and healing Virgo more connected to the physical body and Pisces more connected to our spiritual healing, our spiritual service, Virgo, our practical service, our practical mission day to day. So this is a powerful lunar eclipse when we consider not only that the moon is conjunct Neptune, this is very spiritual, this is definitely a great time to enjoy our sense of spiritual connection, open our intuition, channeling. Spiritual experiences can be very highlighted, insights, downloads, and this also might be a time where your whole system feels more sensitive. And this could even be like a lower energy time period where the physical energy is not that high, but the spiritual energy is really high. So if that is resonating with you or applying to you, taking more time to rest, sleeping really well, carving out some time and space to just be still, to take it easy physically to be listening, tuning in spiritually and connecting however you like to connect and knowing that that sensitivity level is high and to really take very good care of your physical health and your more subtle and energetic health and well-being as well because Pisces can kind of absorb everything and Neptune especially can absorb everything. So what physical boundaries might be helpful to you, energetic boundaries might be helpful to you. And again, Saturn not far off from the moon, only 10 degrees apart can really help us with those boundaries and structures that support us at this time and moving forward for the long haul. So when we look at the stars that are connected here, we have some very powerful stars. But just before that, I'm remembering that I wanted to talk about Mars because Mars is square our nodal axis. What makes an eclipse an eclipse is that the lunation is occurring with a relative proximity to the nodes of the moon within about 12 degrees of the nodes of the moon. So right now the nodes are at the north node at 6 degrees 36 minutes Aries, the south node at 6 degrees 36 degrees of Libra. They are always opposite one another and opposite zodiac signs. So it is that out of sign conjunction where we have the Pisces and Aries energy here at the end of the north node with the moon and Neptune. And then we have the south node sun energy together spanning Virgo and Libra. And we have this powerful square from Mars conjoined with Sirius B Merzum star at seven degrees and 47 minutes. So definitely check in your chart. Do you have anything, any planets or points from about, oh, 20 degrees of Pisces to about 10 degrees of Aries and then on the other end of that about 
20 degrees Virgo to 10 degrees of Libra. This may be a very powerful eclipse to you. And then also if you have planets or points around, oh, say five to 10 degrees of Cancer, this will be energized by Mars. Likewise, five to 10 degrees of Capricorn. So with Mars squaring the nodal axis, it's like our moment of evolutionary growth is to embody the higher frequencies of Mars and Cancer. In this Mars and Cancer aligned with Ceres B. Merzum star. This star is very connected to sound healing. So at this time, sound healing, chanting, vocalization, time with the water, time with the ocean, time in even the bathtub, the shower, the river, whatever, the lake, the pond, the swamp, the bayou. I don't know where you are. You could be anywhere. Any natural body of water, also thinking about the water you're putting in your body, the water you are consuming here, water element, very, very strong here. And with Mars, what I was thinking of was with this particular lunation, having this powerful square from Mars is like, can we purify our motivation? What happens when I've been asking myself this question, so this might or might not resonate with you. What happens when we're not no longer motivated by that fiery, active, you know, even somewhat aggressive light warrior type of energy to do things and share things and, you know, do good work in the world and just have that general like motivation, that driving force, what happens when that light warriorship is not present, you know, when that is released? What is the other type of motivation can be that can be there? You know, a more non-dual, non-polarized with the light warrior motivation. It's like, I'm going to fight the dark. I'm going to, you know, even thinking about these powerful Aries alignments with the node and Chiron and Aries, I'm going to fight the dark. You know, I'm going to expose this. I'm going to change things. I'm going to be an active agent. What happens when we settle down a little bit and be a bit more Piscean about it, be even a little bit more Libran about it, be a little bit gentler, softer, light bringer, light bearer about it? Like what, how does that look? What does that look like? Can we let go of the light warrior based motivation that can be pure and noble, but it still has this, this bit of like fear, aggression, polarity, duality to it. I'm feeling like Mars is kind of the, the silent or not so silent. And well, in Cancer, it could be silent. The silent star of the show in these eclipses, because as we'll see when we look at the Libra solar eclipse, that Mars is squaring that eclipse as well. And really, Mars at the time of this eclipse is conjoining Sirius B at the time of the October 2nd Libra solar eclipse is conjoining Sirius star, Sirius A star, the main star, the alpha star. And so it really feels like Mars is kind of like the, the shadow spotlight key here to these eclipses. So really being gentle, really being a bit softer. And I really feel like our Syrian brethren, our Syrian star beings, our Syrian soul counterparts, future selves can really help us with this, this navigation of duality and polarity and letting go of that, that polarized thinking and that polarized perceiving that 
Jupiter and Gemini is certainly highlighting for all of us, how do we let go? How do we soften? How do we dissolve into source with all this Pisces, Neptunian energy? How do we trust? How do we have faith? How can we be empowered, but in a softer, gentler, more balanced, light bearer, light bringer kind of a way? What, what is motivation that's completely free and liberated of any kind of fear, aggression, battling darkness, any kind of vestiges of, of duality and polarity? What does that look like? What does that feel like? How do we, how do we embody that? How do we bring that in? So these are some of the questions I think this Mars is inviting us to really explore and have this memory since it is Mars, really wake up in our physical bodies as well, that this might not be an intellectual download. This might be more of an emotional download. It's in the sign of cancer. This might be more of a cellular embodiment, a DNA awakening, a real physical process here and certainly something that we can tap into and invite into our experience. So I also wanted to mention the sun is making powerful conjunctions here with Canis Venetici star is called Copula. It's also the Whirlpool galaxy. I've got this image here of it. It's also making a conjunction. I don't have a picture but with the star in the crater constellation, it's called Aux. And the crater constellation is the cup that's riding on the serpent Hydra's back. And this star is connected to the Holy Grail. <laughs> it's like, wow, big deal. It's connected to prophetic knowing of occult knowledge and wisdom. It is the principle of Aux is to carry a precious thing. It's to be the sacred vessel. And in that sense, it's very divine feminine and Hydra constellation is very connected to the divine feminine, the cup ready to receive. The sun with the cup is a person who is a vessel, one who carries something for others, to hold something for others, be it storytelling, art, music, insights, or visions. A national treasure is revealed. And this is from Bernadette Brady's book of star and planet constellate combinations. Seeing ourselves as a sacred vessel, this is something I talk about a lot and it's been really important to connect with and love the physicality that in this lifetime we are earth humans we are physical beings and to treat ourselves with that love and respect that we are carrying the the soul and the spirit within our physical earth human bodies here and perhaps this is about making even more space so we can receive and contact and perceive even more of our light, even more of our soul, our spirit, and our connection. The moon is conjoining a very beautiful star here in Pegasus constellation Markab. And you could see that actually Neptune is conjoining another star in Pegasus, Skiot. I extended the orb for Markab. That's why I have it written in like that. So these are the two stars in Pegasus, part of this great square of knowledge. So our unicorn energy is very highlighted at the time of this lunar eclipse. So please feel free to play with that. There's a sense of knowledge, a sense of remembrance of sacred knowledge of ancient times. These stars are often connected to the goddess cultures earlier in ancient times on earth to Celtic mystical traditions, Celtic past lives where the goddess was very celebrated. Our connection to the earth was very celebrated. 
horses were seen as sacred and in the care of the women, of the females and feminine beings during that time. So with Mark Hobb, there's a sense of stability, being stable in a crisis. And I think that's really important in any eclipse season with this energy of change in the air. We have this star that is helping us to be stable even in the midst of any change, any noise, any aggression, any lower frequencies of Mars that might be presenting themselves at this time and any noise of the polarity and fake news and false information, deception. You know, some of the lower frequencies of Pisces here can be deceptions, lies, false information, particularly with regard to health and healing and, you know, what's true and false, what's real and what's not real. So inviting in that discernment, inviting in that stability and this constellation is very connected also with mental creativity so there's a a talent with the with the intellect and seeing things differently and maybe even releasing into whirlpool galaxy any any kind of limitations any kind of constricted ways of perceiving ourselves reality and the world can be some of what is let go the Libra solar eclipse is occurring on October 2nd at 8.46 a.m. Hawaii time. The zodiac sign of Libra is ruled by Venus. And Libra zodiac sign in medical astrology rules the kidneys, the ovaries, the lumbar region, hormonal and acid balances. So Libra is very, very connected to balance in the body homeostasis and is thematically of course very connected to balance peace harmony justice goodness beauty aesthetic beauty you know beautiful designs and creations and is a very relationship oriented sign as well loves people so you can see this is occurring with the sun and moon together with the south node of the moon retrograde in Libra zodiac sign. It's occurring at 10 degrees and two minutes of Libra zodiac sign. And this lunation is making powerful conjunctions with two stars in Virgo constellation. I have the constellation here drawn in. And we see it's Parima and Vendemiatrix here. And this constellation is connected to Ceres, goddess of grain and harvest, the abundance of the earth, the fruits of the earth. And there's a sense of like reaping what you've sown with Vendemiatrix. Vendemiatrix is the grape gatherer. And the helical rising of the star marked the time of the beginning of the grape harvest. So it was the signification to the ancients. It was time. The grapes were ready and to bring them in. So this star is very connected to collecting, to gathering, and acquiring that which is useful and helpful. This is a, a connection star, a networker star. So it's not only gathering, you no know, physical things like grapes, like edibles, fine foods, you know, collectors items, but also collecting and gathering people, high vibe people, close connections, associates, and so on. People to be in partnership. Arima is a very interesting star connected to prophecy and both of these stars are connected to occult ability. So we have another powerful activation of our spiritual sensibilities, our spiritual sensitivities, but coming through in a very different way here with the solar eclipse, which is an energy of new beginnings. And so 
we can really feel like seeing beyond the veil within both of these eclipses, very strong within this portal. And the ruler Venus of this eclipse is conjunct another very spiritual star called a crux in crux constellation you can see the crux constellation is the cross in the sky and this star is connected to intuition and occult ability letting go of martyrdom paradigms religious trauma from this lifetime other lifetimes any kind of physical or metaphysical cross we are bearing across our soul's experience that it's ready to let go, that this lifetime can be about growth and flourishing, harvesting, you know, karmic merits, blessings, miracles, magic, that it's safe to expand our intuition. And there there may be a receiving of benefits from earlier or different soul experiences where our occult abilities and intuitive abilities were suppressed, were demonized, were persecuted. This can be a powerful healing of like the witch wound and any kind of wounding to our spiritual connection from just practicing in a non-mainstream way, a non-religious way, our connection with the earth and the cosmos. So ancestral healing is also very highlighted here with the south node of the moon aligned with the super galactic center. So letting go of this old stale residue that no longer serves our highest good. Mars making a square to this eclipse is conjunct Sirius A star or Sirius star, the alpha star. So very connected to the mystery schools of Sirius or enlightened Sirius soul aspects. So there, there could be more communion with ascended masters, enlightened beings here, guidance and showing us and leading us on these new beginnings. How do we embody grace? How do we embody forgiveness? How do we embody compassion? How do we embody balance and peace and justice and beauty and order and right relationship with one another in an empowered way? Mars, there can be a lot of ancient remembrance awakened here feeling of connection with our future selves and even guidance, direct guidance from our future selves, more embodiment it might be coming through the body, physical sensations, other people we are interacting with and meeting with. So it can be coming in lots of different ways here, but just to be open and receptive to that Venus, be listening and certainly be open to receive what comes through. But this is a very powerful, both lunations, very powerful for prophecy, for intuition, looking forward and even thinking about, well, okay, if we can look forward, like, what good is it <laughs> to receive this information? I've been asking myself this a lot. As I learn about and study and work with certain predictive astrology techniques it's like okay i'm having all of this information like having all of these insights about what i believe is likely to come to pass and knowing enough about timing and alignments and patterns of energy and how the patterns of energy are working in my chart and other people's charts and also more of the abstract symbol signs and messages I've received in other ways, you know, outside of the astrology. Like, what do you do with this information? We still need to be in the present moment, right? <laughs> need to be in the present moment, but in the present moment, all of the future awareness is available as well as connection with the past self and prior versions of self. So it really is this 
Eclipse portal feels like it's multidimensional training. It's multidimensional opening. It's that next level that we are all ready for. We've been calling in. And I'm seeing now looking at this chart, this grand trine in water, Mars in Cancer, Venus in Scorpio, Saturn in Pisces. So the watery, intuitive, emotional energy, extremely powerful, extremely strong here. And even our ability to make some sense of it with Jupiter and Gemini and then all of the placements in Libra to make sense of it, to talk about it, to think about it, but to also just realize that we we have arrived here <laughs> at this moment and what are you going to do about it you know what's your pure motivation here mars and cancer your motivation to contribute to the wellness of the earth and the next generation connecting to the divine mother and really feeling that sense of peace and harmony and contentment inside that 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 can be activism just touching the experience of inner peace inside that maybe that's that's all that's required just like day to day like touching and expressing and living from that sense of of peace and joy and beauty that maybe it doesn't have to be as, you know, active or productive or, you know, worldly. It can, it can be a feeling state that is sustained over time. So lots of good questions here <laughs> to be asking and considering. I wanted to share also the Sabian symbol for each of the eclipses. So the Pisces lunar eclipse at 26 Pisces, you always round up to the next whole degree. It is watching the very thin moon crescent appearing at sunset. Different people realize that the time has come to go ahead with their different projects. Keynote. A keen appreciation of the value of individualized responses to any challenge of life. The sun at Virgo 26, this symbol is a boy with a censer serves the priest near the altar. The first stage of actual participation in the great ritual of planetary evolution. Practice in the presence of God. For the Libra solar eclipse, Libra 11 is a professor peering over his glasses at his students, problems attending the transmission of knowledge in a special cultural setup. It deals at the intellectual level with the teaching of accumulated collective knowledge and the problem posed by the acquisition of that knowledge. This is what instruction means, a process not to be confused with education. So we can see there's this sense of completion, of individualization, of different responses to something that we are all authentic. There's this sense of ritual, reverence, devotion, practice on a very physical level practical level and then there's this sense of information and checking that what is being communicated is being understood that how knowledge is transmitted is very important and that I feel it's an invitation to remember and kind of restructure even our information processing receptivity and transmission that this loop of giving and receiving is being highlighted here and perhaps hopefully also upgraded so with all that said i think it's time for us to go into the mini readings for each zodiac sign so i'm going to start with pisces and we are going to look at 
this by rising sign, you can also look for your sun and moon sign. Take what resonates. These are general readings. So for example, one or both of these eclipses might be conjunct your Venus or squaring your Jupiter, squaring your ascendant, your descendant, like making very specific aspects. So for a more detailed, specific reading, you know, you can look at your chart yourself if you know how to do that. And also you can consult with an astrologer like myself and get more nuanced information and perspective on what the eclipse means to you or consult with one of the many multitude of very qualified galactic astrology soul reading practitioners on galacticastrochart.com. There's a variety there. And of course, many others all over who have their unique perspectives. So definitely keep in mind, these readings are very, very general. We're going to look at the Pisces lunar eclipse and the Libra solar eclipse, what life areas may be highlighted and reflecting the energy of completions and new beginnings. For Pisces and Pisces rising, this lunar eclipse is occurring in your first house of self with the moon, Saturn, and Neptune all working with you, your identity, your appearance, your physical body, your yourself, the things and the projects that you initiate and bring into the world, what you are contributing, your core energy and frequency with the Mercury and the Sun in your seventh house of relationships here. So this first eclipse all about you and your relationships. Who are you? Who are you in relationship with? There may be changes and endings with regard to ideas of who you are and endings and completions in terms of your relationships and how you are meeting the world. So seventh house is all one-on-one -on -one relationships from romantic partners, friendships, business partnerships, clients, colleagues, all kinds of relationships here shining a spotlight on those. What is the status of those? And Mercury and Virgo can help you really be quite discerning about any changes, any alterations that you may be enacting, or you might find yourself in the midst of on the receiving end of. So the Libra solar eclipse will be occurring in your lots of fun eighth house house of the esoteric occult taxes inheritances shared resources shared monies your partners monies the mysteries of life death resurrection rebirth this could be like new downloads in terms of your soul's experience and even it's it's like remembrance here because it's the south node that's here it's venus that's here at the time of the lunar eclipse but you could really be listening and having a lot of upgrades a lot of releases but also receiving of the beauty of your soul and hidden things coming to light and it might not all occur you know, October 2nd or week of October 2nd, sometimes eclipses can happen day of, you know, week of, but then other times it's like, just be listening for all of this in the next six months that your occult knowledge, esoteric knowledge, more of the mysteries, the darkness, things that were more shadow and hidden can come into awareness. And this could even be, you know, other other people's energy i'm hearing like really loud tones new claire senses coming online claire audience coming online particularly y'all i'm not even kidding just had like like angelic tonal frequencies happening so 
be open to activation of more of your soul gifts and talents be open to connection with the invisible realm this could be deceased loved ones this could be your spirit guides and they may make their presence known to you in ways that are new for you or have only been more rarefied experiences in the past and as a Pisces rising you're ready for it you're probably already like super sensitive and so this this could be next level so <laughs> get excited about that if that excites you and also know that you are a sovereign being and you can turn it down tone, tone it down dial it down just ask for it to be a little bit gentler, softer, less intense, if at any time it is too much for you. So wow, <laughs> exciting times for you, your relationships and your mystical spiritual awakening. Many blessings, Pisces. For Aries and Aries rising, this lunar eclipse is occurring in your 12th house. So full permission here to chill out, take a meditation retreat, take a Reiki class, take a vacation, a spiritual vacation. This isn't like just go party somewhere, go have a vacation. It could be even a staycation or, you know, you're just staying home and you're chilling and you're tuning in and you're treating yourself to lots of spaciousness and there aren't a bunch of expectations placed on you. If you're able to do that, definitely do that. There could be lots of healing happening in your dream time in the unconscious maybe you're guided to get a hypnotic regression session qhht or a reading like the galactic astrology soul readings or maybe you are reading energy for yourself for others this can be a time of heightened spiritual service and it can also be a time where there's finally some completions and some unconscious energy that you've been carrying that you've been holding on to that maybe is even inherited karmic that you can finally let go of and you can finally be free of so that you you feel refreshed you feel more connected than ever before you can show up and be of service practical service sixth house in the ways that make you feel really good and this could even be changes in your daily routine certainly with 12th house sixth house access here your physical body self-care very important your spiritual self-care very very important at this time so to know that, to understand that. And again, if you're feeling lower energy, although it might be hard for you, Aries, please rest. Please take it easy. This could be, you know, a slower walk that you take or, you know, a few extra minutes in meditation, however you want to bring that rest in. But definitely, I invite you to do that. Your solar eclipse in Libra is occurring in your seventh house of relationships. So this could be new beginnings in relationships. How exciting is that? New romantic partners, new friends, new associates, new colleagues, new clients, just like meeting new people that there's a sense of it's karmic, it's faded, it's it's destined, like you're in divine timing to be meeting these individuals, or this could even be a soul family from the past too with the South Node there. So people you've known before, guides you've known before, this could be spiritual beings that you are reconnecting with parts of yourself you're reconnecting with and then of course people that you are reconnecting with whether you've known them earlier in this lifetime or in other lifetimes there is a sense of of that possibility here so really really exciting Aries look forward to some new connections with this Libra solar eclipse for Taurus and Taurus rising, the Pisces lunar eclipse is occurring in your 11th house of connections, community, soul tribe, and the sun and Mercury are opposing in your fifth house of children, joy, 
creativity, romantic love, your, your sense of performance, what really lights you up, your inner child as well. So there can be completions in networks, connections, friendships, you know, big business projects, humanitarian projects that are making space for more spiritual pursuits that feel in resonance with your heart and soul and creativity and what really lights you up and gets you mentally excited and stimulated and what you love to talk about and think about and express here. So the Libra lunar the Libra solar eclipse is occurring in your sixth house of work, of daily routine. So these changes in your social networks and creative projects could also be making space for new beginnings in terms of your day-to-day -day reality, your routines, your relationship with colleagues, co-workers, and what you are doing for your work, your practical service, perhaps you're doing more creative work that really sparks your soul. Perhaps you're working with new groups of people, or maybe this is you working in a new partnership that feels feels more in resonance with what you are all about, has a feeling of safety, of security, of emotional safety, and, and letting go of any connections that that emotional safety is not present or simply setting healthy boundaries where that emotional security has been lacking here. So definitely a time of changes in these areas, community, social connections, children, creativity, love, romance, gambling. This could be an entrepreneurial endeavor that perhaps is completing or upgrading, transforming in some way to be in greater alignment with your ideals and objectives. And that is resulting in new work opportunities, new daily habits, new practical ways of tending your health, your self-care. This is a great time with the Libra solar eclipse to implement new self-care practices that really protect and preserve and support your health in the long term. So Taurus rising, many blessings to you. Best of luck. For Gemini and Gemini rising, this eclipse, the Pisces lunar eclipse, is occurring in your 10th house of work of father often or can be mother here. This is an ancestral house along with the fourth house, so issues of home family, emotional security, financial security, perhaps you're letting go of a lot of worries in those areas, perfectionism in those areas, unhealthy expectations of yourself and others in those areas, any kind of difficulties with authority, anyways, you've been deceived in the past, any of this that is really inherited, you know, from your soul's experience, time to let it go, time to let it com complete, because there's new beginnings in your fifth house coming down the pipe with the Libra solar eclipse occurring in your fifth house of joy and fun and romance and entrepreneurship gambling, risks, creative projects, you know, calculated risks that you're making, Gemini, you know, you've thought about these risks, whatever these risks are, whatever these endeavors and in, in new projects are. So yeah, knowing that the more you can just kind of lean into releasing this ancestral garbage and finding greater balance in work, home, emotions, and more of the practical financial security themes, that there are joyful new beginnings on the horizon here whose time have come and 
as you clear out this space, you're really making space for some exciting new projects that delight your inner child, that fill you with joy and hope and creative life force energy. So to bear with it if it is feeling intense and to know that on the horizon, this might not be on day of October 2nd, that these new beginnings drop in, although they might, this might be more like the next six months or so. You're just noticing more ways that joy and love and abundance and this feeling of like, ah, I'm alive, that that can really drop in more and more for you. Many blessings, Gemini. For Cancer and Cancer Rising, this Pisces lunar eclipse is occurring in your ninth house of metaphysical studies, your belief systems, long distance travel, foreign people, foreign relationships, higher mind, higher knowledge, and the sun and mercury will be in your third house of lower mind, early education, childhood, also siblings. So issues with siblings could be coming up at this time. Issues with education, both more early education as well as higher education, whether that's more organized education or something like a metaphysical course that you are taking here. There is also this possibility of short trips and long trips coming up at this time. So what is this Pisces lunar eclipse really asking you to do? Reprogram your mental body to let go of any thought forms, belief systems, whether they're inherited or from other souls' experiences in your own soul experience, projections, new information you're taking taking in that no longer serves your highest good to be releasing those, especially any kind of patriarchal belief systems, limiting beliefs, any kind of dogma, religious trauma, any trauma that you experience in early education or in higher education to really let those go. And perhaps you're completing a course of study and you're ready for something new and next. And that is what's coming as this Libra solar eclipse will be occurring in your fourth house. So this could be that you are finishing something up here with the Pisces lunar eclipse that's giving you a greater sense of home, family, emotional security, connection to your roots, connection to your ancestry, and like a, a purified version of, of what that is rather than, you know, feeling kind of like the pain and, and drama trauma of it. You could, you could feel more cleansed and clear in your mental body so that that, that emotional stability and security and peace is a more real and day-to-day -day experience for you. So really lovely. Hang in there. If it's getting intense or confusing, this could be confusing energy to remember to ground that grounding is going to support you, you know, taking your time cancer. I know you will tuning into nature, tuning into the earth, using energy hygiene and making efforts to kind of cleanse your mental body because there is this activation of energy occurring at home for you. Maybe you're making your home a safer space for you to receive divine messages, insights, guidance to continue with your studies and to have it be like a really nice, safe space clean like mental space for you so you could be clearing the home quite a bit here as you clear your home you could be clearing your mind too so have fun with that work with that see what is there for you this can be a very powerful time of intuitive opening as well with the solar eclipse occurring in your fourth house and emotional watery, deep, 
you know, divinely timed activation of more of your intuitive and psychic ability here too. Many blessings, Cancer and Cancer Rising. For Leo and Leo Rising, the Pisces lunar eclipse is occurring in your eighth house of occult ability, esoteric subjects, life, death, ascension, resurrection, all the mysteries, shared energy, shared finances, your partner's finances, taxes, inheritances, so many different things covered by the eighth house so with this pisces lunar eclipse there's a sense of anything is possible you could be becoming more aware of some of what has been hidden this can be a powerful time of letting go of inherited karmic burdens that you are really ready to be free of and let go of and they may come in many different forms here you may also feel like the death of an old self that is occurring this is this would be a very powerful placement of like the snake shedding its skin having the lunar eclipse occurring in the height eighth house so just knowing that like support yourself if you need support lean into it if things are really completing there's a lot of letting go perhaps there's grief there's a lot of emotions coming up to really support yourself take good care of yourself and know that whatever is falling away it's going to support a greater sense of self-esteem, self-worth, your gifts and talents, even financial abundance moving forward that this is this is like you being set free here whether that that feels like a a death of an old self or you know a a grieving a letting go of of something that is just heavy that time has come to let it go to simply let it go the solar eclipse in Libra is occurring in your third house. So new beginnings in terms of your mind, early education, third house is also siblings, is also short distance trips. So maybe you're busy and zipping around and going new places and exploring your local environment more. Maybe there are changes in your neighborhood, your local community. Perhaps this is just the birth of a new mindset that you're holding space for, a new way of expressing and communicating what's important to you and what your inner truth is. Maybe it's a new inner truth that you are accessing and becoming aware of. So many different possibilities here with this Libra solar eclipse, but knowing that really the third house and fourth house will be activated with the solar eclipse. So the communication, but also home roots, family, there could be a move that's occurring, or you have your eye on a new place you want to live something that feels more aligned for you. Or this could also bring in like you're beautifying the home because you feel good about yourself. You know, you've cleaned and cleared some heavy dense stuff out and you are making your space feel good for you and really taking measure and taking care to caretake your own emotional security here. But this is a very powerful time to be letting go of self-sabotage and healing shadow issues dormant self issues subconscious deeply rooted issues to let those go for good so that you have this sense of freedom spaciousness and safety for yourself many blessings leo and leo rising for virgo and virgo rising the pisces lunar eclipse is occurring in your seventh house of one-on-one -on -one relationships so this first eclipse is highlighting you and your relationships changes completions endings in certain relationships based on how you have changed and how you've grown. Some of these changes may have to do with friendships, communities, the wider network, perhaps humanitarian projects you are committed to. Your ideals and dreams and hopes and visions for the future are 
percolating and rippling out and transforming your relationships, transforming how you perceive yourself. There could be more of a a collective or transpersonal, globally connected, interdimensional experience of yourself that's really dropping in and is is shifting your reality in powerful ways here. This could bring in more clarity of of what you are really about and having that be born, in other words, with the Libra solar eclipse occurring in your second house. So like new awarenesses of your values, your own innate sense of value, what you have to offer, what you have to share. And this could be new ventures here with the Libra solar eclipse of how you are creating abundance and financial prosperity, new money making projects, new applications of your values, of your skills, gifts and talents. And these are gifts and talents that span across this lifetime, but also are coming from other parts of your soul experience and other lifetimes. So to certainly be open to that, any creative ideas, anything that just feels fun, sparks joy, and to know that any letting go of relationships or partnerships that come in for you, it's all to make space for what's what's coming because you value yourself and others value what you have to offer, what you have to share. And whatever your idea is that you're having, you know, this is let go of anything that any kind of limiting beliefs and doubts and, and know that you could be receiving downloads and insights about something that's going to take you far in the next six months. So you have time to really implement it. This is a time of planting very powerful seeds for at least the next six months. So be open to that. Be open to the changes in yourself, your relationships, and the possibilities moving forward that are in alignment with your hopes, dreams, visions, and wider community that feels in resonance with you that infinite possibilities for abundance are are coming in for you. So be open and receive many blessings, Virgo. For Libra and Libra rising, wow, this is going to be a powerful eclipse season for you as the solar eclipse will be in your sign. So the Pisces lunar eclipse is occurring in your sixth house. So sixth house and 12th house, very highlighted here by Saturn, Moon, and Neptune, bringing in maybe restructuring your day-to-day, restructuring your work environment, restructuring your health and daily self-care. There can be this would be a great time to detox, do a detox, do a brief, you know, one day of just drinking juice or eating lightly or vegan or raw vegan or drinking more water, or taking more walks, resting more, whatever you need for your health here, the highest good of your health to implement that. And that may simply be you need to take some naps or you need an extra half an hour of sleep and to certainly make space for that where available and let go of any habits that you know are just not serving your highest good. Like you know it's not good for you. You can let go of these self-sabotaging behaviors with regard to your health and with regard to work. This is a great time. Lean into that. Let it go. Be free. And this could even clarify and bring in, you know, insights from your dream time and greater understanding and awareness of your unconscious and the collective unconscious, your spiritual connection, seeing into the invisible realms, and also know with the sixth house and twelfth house highlighted here, your work with animals may be highlighted extra at this time. So be open to that if that resonates. 
the Libra solar eclipse is occurring in your first astrological house of yourself, your identity, your appearance, projects, and things that you are initiating, your unique energy, what you're bringing into the world. So leaning into this energy of new beginnings in you, you know, this could be a little change, a little freshening up in your appearance or your wardrobe or your style it can be something as superficial as that. It could be something that's more deep, like you're thinking about yourself differently. Maybe you've remembered certain things about your soul and spirit's experience. Maybe you're just carrying yourself differently with a different, more confident posture, a, di a more clear, a clearer, lighter, brighter auric feel. Maybe you're feeling good about yourself because you let go of some of those self-sabotaging behaviors, but there's lots of, there's this energy of new beginnings with you. So trying new things, you know, not just in the month of October, but in the six months and being open to seeing yourself and thinking about yourself differently, expressing yourself a little bit differently, that that is in alignment with your authenticity. You you could really be asking the question who I am and and be listening for that and and receiving insights and downloads that really expand your sense of self-worth, expand your sense of your gifts and talents, your contribution, make you feel more abundant and also receive more abundance, more prosperity in into your life in the many different forms that that abundance and prosperity, you know, including but not limited to money, but just feeling really good about yourself too. Many blessings, Libra and Libra rising. For Scorpio and Scorpio rising, the Pisces lunar eclipse is occurring in your fifth astrological house of children, creative projects, entrepreneurship. This house is also linked to gambling, the inner child, what lights you up. So there could be a completion in any of those areas and this counterbalance occurring with you thinking about connecting with your soul tribe and focusing too on what are your hopes and visions for the future, for humanity, for your life? How are you contributing to that? And this could simply be by letting go of anything that is no longer serving your joy, right? anything that is no longer feeding your inner child, thinking about what, what does my inner child need right now? Issues with children, your own children can be highlighted at this time as well. There may be a need for boundaries. There may be a sense of, you know, changes here, completions, endings of how things were, and to, to make peace with whatever those those are and know that any any changes with your children children can then make more space and safety for your own inner child you know receiving what your own inner child needs at this time what's going to bring you more joy and abundance and creativity and self-expression and, and feeling in alignment with this wider vision, your hopes and dreams and humanitarian efforts you may be involved in. So this could be a new course of study, education, higher mind teachings, metaphysical studies that you're engaging in and knowing that the Libra solar eclipse is occurring in your 12th house. So this is a new beginning in terms of shadow work, dream work, collective unconscious work. This could this is like a new seed planted in the deepest part of your being, the deepest part, the most hidden part of your psyche. And you could become more aware of of that material, of that unconscious material and, and see it 
see it flowing and expressing through you more, you embodying more of your, your soul's experience, but it does require some, some quiet time, some listening. This could be extra sleep, extra rest, extra self-care, extra alone time, you know, quiet walks in nature, whatever you need, whatever feels good. But there, there can be this sense of like, communication and communion happening in your alone time. So know that that's really possible here. And the time is ripe for a really powerful activation of your, your multidimensional self. And you may be becoming aware of some of the deepest, truest core parts of you that ultimately serve to help you feel more connected to others you know, whether that's your friend group or the wider global community, the galactic community, and also bring you more joy, more creative life force energy too. So many blessings, Scorpio and Scorpio rising for Sagittarius and Sagittarius rising. This Pisces lunar eclipse is occurring in your fourth house of home, roots, family, ancestry. So you may be seeing a completion, a completed manifestation within one of those life areas. This is also a big juicy invitation to let go and engage in ancestral healing, any kind of inherited negativity from maternal lineage, paternal lineage, and redefining your own sense of emotional security, financial security, trust and safety, and faith that the universe has your back, that you are cared for in terms of your work, your career, your public reputation, as well as at home and your emotional security. So really reflecting on emotional security, financial security, inner mother, inner divine mother, inner divine father, and being touching that that wholeness and that that healing within yourself that whatever you might not have gotten in childhood, this is a great opportunity to be giving it to yourself now and to let go of just anything from from childhood that is still impacting you negatively, knowing that it doesn't have to be everything. You know, you just let go of this layer this time and the eclipses and other transits will come back again. They don't have to do it all. And in just the September 17th, 18th, that it's a, it's a process and it's a process that's kicking off um, the, the next six months, but there's some kind of really powerful completion here that is setting you up for even more success, even more connectivity as the Libra solar eclipse is taking place in your 11th house. Perhaps you're reaching more people, connecting with more people, connecting with soul tribe, having this sense of hope and optimism and insights and vision and the idea of the future, your future and what's possible for you and for humanity that you could feel very expanded and there could be lots of positive changes in your social groups, your networks and your your global business and humanitarian efforts, you know, the grid work that you're involved in with, you know, non-physical beings and, and galactic beings too. This could even be new beginnings and new contacts with more non-physical beings and more galactic beings and understanding how all that works and connecting with the sense of your galactic ancestry and your galactic heritage, knowing that as you release this old, you know, childhood stuff, you can connect to an even truer, purer, and more holistic sense of family and belongingness as well. So many blessings to you, Sag and Sag Rising. For Capricorn and Capricorn rising, the Pisces lunar eclipse is occurring in your third astrological house of communication, 
short trip, short distance travel, your mental environment, early education, siblings. This can be letting go of any traumas with regard to any of those experiences, you know, early childhood experiences, siblings, any kind of low vibe mental habits, mental patterns that you're ready to be free of. You know, this could be a powerful detoxification of your thought forms, belief systems that are negatively impacting your relationships. Maybe there are ways you're communicating to yourself, to others that are negatively impacting your relationships, or maybe you're being spoken to in, you know, more negative ways. And you're just ready, you're ready to experience more kindness, more kind communications, being kinder to yourself, being kinder within your own mental environment. The more you can do that, the more your relationships and contacts with the outside world are going to really reflect that as well. But there could be many relationship changes initiated by you or coming from the outside. And so it's really important to keep a positive attitude to be, this could be a lot of spiritual guidance coming in communication with guides, messages, and reordering how your understanding reality in your life, thinking about yourself, expressing yourself, and being open to new ways of mentally operating, communicating. There could be travel involved with this, short trips, long trips with the ninth house, new programs of study you're embarking upon or completing. And these could be projects and programs that are setting the stage for new beginnings in your work in your career, in your public reputation of your financial security as the Libra solar eclipse will be occurring in your 10th house, a new status you are embodying at this time that you're ready and you're worthy and any kind of beliefs that, oh, I can't do it, I'm not worthy or you know, over perfectionism, criticism of self, others, harsh judgments, you've let go of those, you're trusting the flow, trusting the guidance you're receiving. And you could see new growth, new relationships, new partnerships that are dawning on the horizon of this Libra solar eclipse, that perhaps you're connecting with a wider environment, you're connecting with people who share your hopes and dreams for the future, who share your humanitarian vision for the well-being of humanity in the earth, that this could be a very fertile time this next six months or so in your career and your social networks that all it took was, you know, a little bit of mental detoxification, a little bit of communication detox. You may choose a little social media fast here, even with the lunar eclipse occurring in your third house. And, and also just, you know, my advice too, with Mars that's squaring all of this in your seventh house, that if people around you are triggered or, you know, you're triggered by people around you to take a deep breath, take some time, don't take it personally, and to let that channel into what serves love, what serves mental and emotional security, what serves the vision that I have for humanity that I know is true for the earth here. And this could even bring in like you're working together with others in very empowered and activated ways on all of this. So this Mars square doesn't have to be a negative thing, but if it's manifesting as, as such as like, oh, like triggers in the environment, triggers in other people to just settle down, calm it down and take some extra 
deep breaths, take some extra time, pause before you react and allow that spaciousness to be there so that you can de-escalate and you can be you can be the example here with the Libra solar eclipse in your 10th house. You can be the example of peace, of love and of balance and keep tuning back in to that peace vibration. Many blessings to you, Capricorn and Capricorn rising. For Aquarius and Aquarius rising, the Pisces lunar eclipse is occurring in your second house of your finances, your possessions, your self-worth, your gifts, your talents. And the eighth house is also activated by Mercury and the sun here. So you may have been doing, you may be doing some pretty intense uh, spiritual work here. And that's lovely. That is to be celebrated and to give yourself credit for all that shadow material you've moved through and to let go of any residual limiting beliefs, ideas, ways of being that you you are unworthy or you know any feelings of low self-esteem, any feelings of you know constriction about what's possible for you financially that this could be a big dose of spiritual values coming in here and to certainly lean into that, lean into the support and the love of source. And you may be becoming aware of very deeply held unconscious things. This could be things that are unconscious parts of yourself, you know, the ways you've projected outward onto other people in, in your relationships the ways that you've been projected upon to and receive projections and to let go of all that drama and nonsense, clear it out, cleanse it out, be free, be liberated and come into a clear sense of who you are, what you value and let go of any kind of um, illusion, deception, delusion, inherited patriarchal. Perhaps this is like, you know, a negative father energy where your father wasn't very kind to you and you're 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 aware of that, of course. And this can be an opportunity to let go of that inner father energy that was negative or that was overly critical so that you can see yourself more clearly and that that can be reflected beautifully and powerfully in your relationships with people really valuing you and who you are and what you're all about. With the Libra solar eclipse, it's occurring in your ninth astrological house of higher mind, higher education, belief systems. Perhaps this is new belief systems based on all the spiritual work you've been doing. Perhaps you're ready or you have space to embark upon a new course of study, metaphysical study. Perhaps this is a long pilgrimage you're going on, a long distance travel, a trip that you are going on. You're thinking about, you know, what would you like to learn? Restructuring your belief systems in a more expansive way, expanding your horizons. You could be learning something new, teaching something new, and receiving public recognition for it receiving insights and awarenesses about how you might want to move forward in your career and having greater sense of sweetness coming in through your career. There could be many different changes in your work and your day-to-day -day habits at this time that have you shifting how you think about yourself, how you think about reality and what those inner beliefs are and really seeing how they are manifesting in your most intimate relationships in terms of your self-esteem and in terms of what's possible and work so in your career so really being open to expand your horizons and and really embody at your next level the fact that you are a sacred vessel 
and your body is your temple and your health is your temple and to take very good care of yourself given the high level of the high degree of transformation you have been going through are going through be gentle with yourself and to to allow your mental body to like recalibrate to all of the depth of transformation you have been going through be kind to yourself and maybe invite in a new perspective perhaps that's really what is going to be connecting for you the next six months or so having a new perspective of what it all means to you there could be a greater sense of meaning based on the powerful experiences that you have been having and are having so many blessings to you, Aquarius and Aquarius rising. Okay, finally, we made it to the end. I pulled two cards from the Angels of Atlantis Oracle card deck by Stuart Pierce. And it feels very, very perfect and on point for Archangel Haniel with this message of hope. For whatever we are releasing, whatever we are clearing out at the time of the Pisces lunar eclipse, that whatever is let go, we could be receiving divine messages from this beautiful dove. This is also that sense of like freedom, of a flying, of anything is possible, that whatever you're going through, you're supported, you're protected. You are connected to the angels, to the birds, and it's all in service of your freedom. And all these sparkles feel like all the infinite possibilities that are able to come in as you create space for a more hopeful future that is eminent with this card Shemael with the beginnings linking us into the Libra solar eclipse which has that energy of new beginnings so a new day is dawning the possibilities are infinite you are supported you are ready what lies on the other side of the eclipse portal is very magical, perhaps even better than what you could have possibly dreamt or hoped or conceived of, considered as possible, that this looks like a very beautiful, peaceful scene of, of walking the beach, walking the waters, and this beautiful mountain with the sun rising here. A new day is upon us, and it's a hopeful day. So to hold on to that when, when things may feel rough or intense or really, really noisy, know that the truth is this energy of hopeful new beginnings, like that is what we are being held in ultimately. If that resonates for you, hold that as your truth, as your anchor, even as different events unfold, whether in your life or in the you know, global stage, the world stage, eclipses can bring, you know, some intensity, drama, trauma, and the global stage. So to just keep centering and keep focusing on your vision for a hopeful new beginning, a hopeful future. And even if you don't know what that new beginning is that you're manifesting, I know I've been kind of feeling that, like I have all these ideas about new beginnings and new possibilities, um, but you can, you can be certain and be clear on, well, what feeling states do you want to experience joy, bliss, beauty, balance, heart connection, peace, these kinds of feeling states can can really guide to anchor those in internally and know that they will be reflected externally in a multitude of glorious ways moving forward. 
So that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. To connect more with me, visit my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. Got a variety of classes coming up, Astrology Basics with Reiki, a Reiki 1 and 2 certification class, as well as, of course, you're invited to the October 2nd free Libra Solar Eclipse Distance Reiki Share. So I hope you'll come. We'll talk more about the astrology and do a Reiki journey for the solar eclipse. So many blessings to you if you want and an eclipse reading. Definitely reach out soon. We can dive in to your astrology and I'm also available for Reiki sessions as well. Thank you so much for being here. Blessed eclipse season. May this be your best eclipse season yet. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is. Mahalo.